not. I've read a ton of books on art and it's important to learn something new every day. In here, I'm just going to read you this one line from this and it says, my primary goal as an educator is to teach you to be actively engaged in your world, not passively receptive to it, to be at once critical and self-critical. So this is something that's not easy for many of us because we are very attached to our own work and we are very close to it. And it's really hard to step back and look at it with different eyes. So that is what I wanna to talk to you today about. There are a few different tactics you can use to get there where you can look at it in with with new eyes with new light um, and in this book also he was talking about ah it just says I am now live hopefully I've been live for, prior to this but anyways I'm going to keep on going I hope you just heard the quote I just read to you uh, in this book it also talks about uh, Marcel Duchamp and I don't know if any of you know of his work he was very uh, one of the abstract expressionists i believe he's from the states and he's the one that went into a hardware store and bought a urinal took it to the art museum and hung it upside down and called it art this is something i kind of always had issues with i never understood it myself even though i've studied art theory for years i don't understand couldn't understand why that was in the art history books and yet it was and this book just explained it he said that you have to as an artist be open to the aesthetics of things around you so he commented on the shape and the line of the urinal and if you turned it upside down it was no longer a urinal it's still pushing it a bit but the point is all around us is aesthetically pleasing things and it is the job of the artist to see that so when you're looking at your own art it is especially hard to see that so there are a number of things you can do but first of all i want to tell you a story back from the beginning of my art career. I was very young, 25 years old type of young. I just started painting not that long before that. And I was very confident in my work and very self-assured. And I wound up going to a very prestigious art gallery in Vancouver named the Harrison Art Galleries. And I walked in and I asked if they would be willing to look at my paintings. And the owner of the gallery, his name was Christopher Harrison, was incredibly gracious because that is not how it is done. Normally you phone ahead and you book an appointment and you make set time aside for the them to look at your work. That's technically. But I was young and I was confident and I really thought a lot about my paintings. And this man very graciously took me in and said, yes, bring me your paintings. I would be happy to look at them. And he spent an entire hour with me that day. And I am forever grateful. It was one of those changing moments in my career. I learned a tremendous amount from this gallery owner. And I wrote him a letter years later to thank him for taking the time out with me because I thought my paintings were really good, but he opened my eyes at looking at them in a different way. And he did it very respectfully and very graciously and with kindness. And he spent over an hour with me and he took my paintings uh, in the gallery and he looked from one, he hung them in one spot and then he turned the lights up and then he had it on a dimmer switch and he turned the lights down and then he turned it up and he turned it down. And he kept looking at it in different lights and I didn't really understand what it was he was doing. But he explained that all good art will look good in good lighting and it will also look good in poor lighting. So when you are working on your paintings, go in and look at it in the evening. Put it up in your mantle and leave it there at the end of your work day. Put it there and then go back in to your and look at the painting in a different light. Or first thing in the morning before the sun's cut month has come up 
take a look at it in the different lighting and you will be surprised as to whether or not your composition will stand strong, whether your values are accurate. Those are incredibly important. Whether your shapes are in the right place. These are all very, very important to do in different light sources. So don't think that you should always have good lighting on your art in order for it to really stand properly. It should be able to stand up in multiple ways, multiple lightings, types of lighting. So I learned that that one day. And he also explained to me how it was important to finish my edges. And as he looked at it in these different lights, he says, you're, you're not quite finished your paintings. And they are really, really cool, good quality. He said I was way, way beyond where I should have been at such an early stage in my career. He was very complimentary, but he did not hold back. And I learned just as much from him that day as any other experience in my career, probably. He was just very, very helpful. So one day, maybe I will fill you in on what the result came of that hour long meeting with Christopher Harris. It was a great day. And um, yeah, I'll tell you about it one day. Ask me. Okay. Don't let me forget and I'll fill you in on the what 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 the end results were. And in the meantime, I'm going to go back to your paintings. Another raise, way you can um, learn a lot about your painting is to turn it upside down. Because keep in mind, you are painting a subject matter on a two-dimensional surface. So you're not actually painting a tree because trees are three-dimensional. They, you're painting the image of a tree. So it should stand up compositionally, good lines, good shapes. Everything should be just as powerful if the painting is upside down as it should look right side up. So remember to turn it upside down on occasion and it will uh, tell you whether or not all of those, your five qualities of fine art are working. Another way you can also uh, get a good idea of whether or not your painting is going to cut it is by taking a photo with your camera or your iPad. Then look at it on the little screen. Your compositional errors, your value errors, etc. will pop out. It's easier to see. That is one of the best tricks in the book for finding out whether or not you're finished your painting or whether you've got any mistakes coming or areas that you need to tweak. Now, I had my video camera set up so that you could see my painting behind me. Let me just... With that in mind, I realized that my road in my painting behind my shoulder there, it was during my last Monday, 10 minute Monday art tips that I realized that my road was standing out too much that it wasn't receding and it's kind of looking more like a wall, right there. See, it's kind of looking a bit like a wall and I want it to be dip, disappearing off in the distance. So now that I know that there are a few things I can do to fix that issue, that compositional issue, that the, uh, a light issue, a value issue, perspective issue, your aerial perspective is, my aerial perspective is somewhat off in that painting. Uh, and the rope part. So that's a quick fix, but I did not notice it as I was as I was sitting in front of my painting. It wasn't until I looked at it on this little screen here with you all watching that I realized I needed to do a little bit of a tweak there. So I don't know quite why that works, but it really does work to look at your painting on a small little technical computer screen or phone screen. So that is one of the best ways to find your errors. And I find my own errors by doing it that way. So keep that in mind. Um, what else did I want to mention to you? I, yes, I think that is all I want. I'm like looking at my notes and what does that mean? <laughs> I'm an artist, what can I say? I hope you are all painting and being creative. The sun is starting to shine here in Kimberly. And I hope it's shining wherever you are. 
I hope you can get out and get some creative ideas, get some inspiration. And I want to thank you again for everybody that has signed up for our group here on Facebook, the Caprice Fine Artist community. We have, even since last Monday, I think we've got 20 more new follow uh, group members. I welcome you all. And please take a time to introduce yourself. We all want to know who you are. Uh, a lot of my 10-minute art tips are focused primarily on artists, but I also want to hear from those of you who are not artists and who are here to appreciate art. What kind of art do you like? What kind of art would you like to see? And for the artists out there, I do hope you'll share your what you're working on, share what it is you're doing, share what inspires you. This is a group to just get everybody excited about art and to join us all together. Let me just see, I've got a notification here. Let me see, did anybody? No, okay. Um, nobody is commenting, so I have no, I hope you're all great. If you liked this video, please do leave a comment in the comment section. And I look forward to seeing you again next Monday. I hope this helped. Have a good week and take care. Bye for now.